Founded in 1886, this picturesque and historical higher education institution was a women's only college known for its teacher training program until 1974. And it wasn't until 1978 that the first men's basketball team took to the hardwood. When Winthrop started allowing men's students to come here in 1974, uh, it's five years later that we started an athletic program uh, for basketball. 28 years later, the Winthrop University Eagles became the darlings of a nation. What's up, Wu fam? Can you believe it's been 10 years? 10 years since that historical went back in Spokane. Still remember like it was yesterday, Coach Marshall's epic pregame speech. It really got us fired up, really got us going. The confidence oozing through the locker room. Nobody felt like we was going to lose that day. It was evident in that locker room. Man. Everybody felt the need to be confident to be secure, be ready to play if their number was called at any moment. We was a real solid unit that whole year and a solid team that was ready for war, ready to make history for our program. Some of the most memorable things I remember about that game have to be my behind the back pass to Terrell, of course. Taj was, that's a man's jam dunk. Still one of the best dunks. Still not better than this dunk against Oregon the next game, but Still, it was very, you know, substantial in that moment for that game. Uh, DeAndre jumping up and down on the sideline after Craig's uh, dunk that pretty much sealed the game. Can't forget, big big gainer, Chris Gaynor's clutch three-pointer that gave us the lead for good after Notre Dame had crawled back. You know, there's so many memorable moments from that game. I always cherish it. It was a great time, a great feeling to finally – you know, get that weight off our shoulders to bring a NCAA tournament win to our program. You know, finish the year top 25. You know, all that good stuff, man. It was it was a, a great moment, one I'll never forget. I want to send out a hearty congratulations to our honorees for the Winthrop University Athletic Hall of Fame. Shannon Sitzman Reed, joined by the gaffer, Coach Rich Posipanko, the boss, Tom Hickman and the PG, the point guard, Chris Gaynor. Uh, great honor, uh, congrats. You guys deserve every, every honor with, that's bestowed upon you tonight with your family and friends. Enjoy this and soak it up. I was also asked to speak briefly about the 10 year anniversary of the 0607 Eagle squad that went undefeated in the conference and won 19 games in a row, finished in the top 25, but most importantly, won a game in the NCAA tournament. Uh, that year started in a, very tough because of the schedule. We had seven BCS or Power Five teams that we had to play. Seven times we went on the road and got checks to play. Um, I remember talking to Tom Hickman about, I don't want to play any more of these games. And, and Tom said, you, you've got to finish your schedule. So we picked up Mississippi State, I think, and Texas A&M at the end. We had one Division I home game uh, that we had because Mount St. Mary's president had been previously employed at, Wich at Winthrop and he wanted to start a home and home and have his team start at Winthrop. Uh, and their coach was livid about that, as I recall. But we did have that one game at home. Um, and I remember uh, during the midst of the 19 game win streak, we had to go to a bracket buster game against Missouri State in the Missouri Valley Conference. And Terrell Martin remarked after we won and went back to the airport and got on our chartered plane to go home. He goes, Coach, why don't we do this all the time? This is how we should always travel. And I said, you, you have no idea the expense of these charter planes. But Tom got us a charter plane because we were playing well. And we had another game shortly after that bracket buster Friday night ESPN tilt against the Bears of Missouri State. But that was a big win. Kind of kept them out of the NCAA tournament, as I recall. I think they had a, still to this day, they were the, the best RPI team ever to be left out, and part of the reason was we went in and won that game that Friday night. Um, so there we are going into the conference tournament, and even though we had only lost to North Carolina with Tyler Hansborough and Ty Lawson and the, a great Maryland team and a, the number two ranked Wisconsin Badgers in overtime, uh, as well as um, Texas A&M, Billy Gillespie's last team before he gets a Kentucky job. All four of those teams were four seeds or better in the NCAA tournament, and those were only four losses. But we didn't know if we would get in if we didn't win the conference tournament. 
and we didn't play great against VMI. They were hitting everything. And finally, Taj McCullough, thank goodness, knocked down some threes in the second half and put us over the top, and we got to the NCAA tournament. So we played Notre Dame. We're an 11 seed, by far our best seed uh, that we'd ever received in the six previous NCAA tournaments. I think the best seed we ever got was 14. So now we're an 11. We've got a legit shot against Notre Dame as a 7, and we build a 20-point lead and playing great. And we didn't prepare against pressure because Notre Dame didn't use any pressure all season long. No films that we could find did they press other teams. But what do you do when you're down 20 points in the NCAA tournament? But they started to press. And then we got a little tight. We missed a couple one and ones as I recall. I'm sorry, Chris. Uh, DeAndre Adams came in and played pretty well for a couple minutes and steadied our ship. And then Notre Dame kept chipping away and ultimately on a Luke heron Gody jump hook took the lead. So on the sideline, I didn't say anything to anyone, but I'm thinking I'm going to blow a 20-point lead with this wonderful team and be the single worst NCAA tournament coach in the history of the tournament. But, Chris, you came back in. You flawlessly ran Jacksonville to the right, Jacksonville to the left. The next possession, I remember Craig Bradshaw was so open, he dropped the ball before laying it in or dunking it. And the two-point deficit became a 10-point victory. And I still remember DeAndre jumping on the sidelines with Jason Colleen and the guys and Kyle Moore. What a wonderful picture that is in my memory. And um, we had a great shot against Oregon in the second round, but it didn't quite happen. But you guys were an incredible team, uh, maybe one of the best teams that's ever played uh, in the Big South. And certainly one of the best teams that I've ever coached. And I wish you all the best. I hope that many of you are there uh, reliving the, the, that anniversary and enjoying your fellowship. Please contact me if you already don't contact me now. Uh, I'd love to catch up and see how you're doing. And I wish all of you the best. You honorees, soak it up, man. It's a tremendous time. And, and again, you deserve all the accolades. And thanks for letting me be a part. We've got a game tomorrow, but I wish you all the best.